the biggest yeah. problems that we have in dolphin research, I think, is that everybody always says, how smart are dolphins? Oh, right. And that's a human thing. It's really how are dolphins smart? That's correct. How do they do it? How do they do it in their terms? Right. Because, you know, they don't, they, the, their brain, uh, in terms of its development, has been around millions of years longer than ours at the, its current development. Mm -hmm. So they've spent a lot of time. It was, there's an interesting quote that I just found recently. Jacques Cousteau in the mid-70s was asked to project towards the future what's going to happen on this planet in terms of the oceans that will be most significant. And one of the things he thought would be most significant is when humans can finally communicate with dolphins. Since dolphins don't have hands to write down their histories, we'll find a way to find out about their history. What they know about this planet that mm -hmm. we don't know, we'll be able to share and work together. My wife Donna, I mean, she's really convinced, I, I support her on that, that they have so much to teach us about this planet that we don't know. And I, I'm excited. The other side of our research is the human stuff that's coming out of okay. it. How we're able to take an animal. For example, as you know, humans have a brain that has two hemispheres, uh, and we have a corpus callosum, which is that little stuff that connects the two sides of the brain. Well, dolphins fairly don't have that. I okay. mean, pretty, excuse me, pretty much don't have the kind of corpus callosum. So they have what's called a unihemispheric brain. That means they can sleep with the left brain asleep and continue swimming. The right side is active. The right side of the brain is active. And, and then when they finish with that, the right side goes to sleep and the left. Well, that's fascinating. That means they yeah. have portions of the brain that can work uh, independently of the other. And think about that with stroke victims. If we can find a way to translate that kind of um, psychoarchitecture, uh, excuse, excuse me, cytoarchitecture for for humans who've had strokes or, or children who have challenges at, at birth that, that cannot be corrected through any, any other way than the neuroplasticity we're now discovering in the brain. And, uh, and neurogenesis that we're now beginning to understand in the brain, especially for children under five years of age, we may be able to um, stimulate parts of the brain that could take over. Well, we know, for example, uh, when when you uh, look at the brain, uh, an MRI, and you have a child who is deaf, you, excuse me, a child who is blind, okay. we know that when they hear stuff, that the areas in the brain that should be processing sight now begins to process sound. Oh. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Are there ways that we can help the brain to do that kind of neuro, neuroplasticity to help children? Stroke victims, uh, people from that have Alzheimer's disease where you know the challenges of memory are and it's going away and it's a horrible disease because you know these poor people they're like in prison they're you know they're imprisoned in their own body because they cannot mm -hmm. if there are ways we can learn from dolphins to use the models that we've learned from their brain to help humans I think that that's just exciting to me, exciting so we're actually one of the things that we're learning to do is how do we record well let's take it for example yeah. if if you have a dolphin that's swimming and he sees a shark and he comes back and sends that signal to another dolphin of the picture of that shark, he's now transmitted a memory. Here's the shark over here, he's remembered it and sent it to another dolphin. We're able to take a glyph of that, take a picture of that, we're now beginning to take pictures of memories. Mm. Now what does that mean in terms of the human brain? That's really exciting. I mean, we believe that some years down the road, maybe five to ten years down the road, if your daddy comes to you and says, do you remember, honey, when we had uh, lunch in 1957, we had this hot dog, and, and, your, and your dad says, but I'm really having a problem memorizing, you know, what, what took place there? Yeah. Theoretically, we will be able to take a picture of that memory that you have and project it into your dad or your mom or your brother or your sister's brain who's been challenged by whatever mm. in terms of that memory, and they may be able to re-experience re it, at least from your perspective, those events. Right, that's, that's an incredible possibility.